Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, March 5th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time 2024. Take a look at the increase in uplift. This is more magma intruding in Iceland, meaning uh, an eruption is just days away. And speaking of eruption, Villa Rica volcano today illuminating a lenticular cloud with its uh, lava pond up at the apex there. Absolutely spectacular. Keep calm. It's boom time. Torrential snowstorm leaves Northern California covered in powder. And that's not all. Monster California blizzard leaves epic scenes of towns buried in feet of snow. Ho, ho, ho. Take a look at some of the wind gusts here. Palisades Tahoe saw a 190 mile per hour gust while Ward Mountain, California, 184 mile per hour gust and Mammoth, 170. Huge wind gusts and everything's buried. Some areas receive more than 10 feet of snow since Friday. Here are the top snow, toast, <laughs> the top snow totals. Whew. Say that five times fast. Sugar Bowl Ski Resort, 126 inches. Soda Springs saw 116. Kingvale, 106. And Palisades Tahoe Ski Base, 96 inches. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. Al Gore says it doesn't snow in California anymore. Hazardous snow expected in Colorado this week with more snow to follow. Take a look at the region. It's going to go all the way down the Rocky Mountain spine here and the west slope, including the South San Juans and the Sangre de Cristo. Heavy snow for 3.7 to 3.8. That's just in a few days. And we'll check the models in just a minute. As a cold front could bring severe weather and large hail to San Antonio as well. And additional mountain snow in the west. Thunderstorms and heavy threat for the deep south. A cold front moving off the Pacific coast will produce additional heavy mountain snow and valley rain in the Pacific northwest through portions of California, the Great Basin, and the Rockies. Conditions are expected to improve by Wednesday afternoon in the south. A line of thunderstorms, a few of which could bring strong could become strong with hail and maybe some tornadic activity. They will continue through the evening. Locally heavy rain will also be possible with some of these storms. Let's take a quick look at the GFS model here. You can see some of that severe weather down in the south here currently. It's going to be moving east, maybe affecting Georgia in the next three to six hours and move off the coast by Wednesday as more snow continues to fall in the west in a big way, especially in Northern California. That's going to last for days there all the way through Thursday. And then hopefully that's going to peter out. Still snowing Thursday and Friday in California as the system moves through the four corners and brings us a little bit of the global warming goodness. It looks like severe weather for the weekend from the middle of the U.S. moving east like a beast. Here is by the end of the weekend, it should be on the East Coast and bombing out up in Canada on Sunday. What a fun day. Let's take a look at the GFS snow totals. Here is Wednesday through Thursday morning. You can see that heavy snow in the North Sierras there, as well as Southern Oregon. Looks like Idaho is going to be pick, picking up some significant snow totals, as well as Western Wyoming, and some snow moving into the Rockies by Thursday morning. It's going to continue Thursday into Friday for Colorado, bringing some heavy totals to our region as the system moves east, bringing much needed snow to Nebraska as well as Kansas. And that system will pop more snow and more moisture in Michigan and Illinois and the east by the end of the weekend. Pakistan, at least 35 die due to surprise snowfall and heavy rains. Holy macaroni. Seismic update. <clears throat> no quakes of note, really. 5.1 in China. Here we have some activity. 6.1 in Macquarie Island region. Interesting quake in the U.S. here. 2.5 in Pickneyville, Illinois. And many people thought that that may be a rare quake. But in fact, if you check the data, and this 
particular area of Illinois, there have been some rather large earthquakes over the last four decades, including a 5.4 15 years ago and lots of approaching five magnitude in the last 50 years. So pretty interesting, the seismic activity that occurs here, uh, probably related to, well, it's anyone's guess. We're keeping a close eye on the Reykjanes Peninsula as an imminent eruption is going to happen there. Seismicity has dropped off a cliff over the last 12 hours, but an incre the increased likelihood of an eruption still remains. The volume of magma within Svartsvangi Reservoir continues to increase, which could result in a new dike propagation and or volcanic eruption in the coming days. It's our prediction that it will reach very high probability in 48 hours, and after that, it will be at high probability the whole way. A volcanic eruption could start with very short warning time, even less than 30 minutes, but typically, all of the activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula at this point has been preceded by a... Uh, an, a, lo a huge increase in tremor and volcanic ac or seismic activity just prior to the eruption. Oh, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And it's most likely that the eruption will occur in the area between Mount Stura Stogfell and Mount Hagfell, which is where the eruption has already occurred. Here you can see all the eruptive phases in colors. Blue, purple, green, and yellow have already erupted. Boom, 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 boom. And the current phase of uplift and intrusion is in red. And over the last few days, uh, the magma volume actually decreased. So many people were saying, oh, well, it's over. But unfortunately, the data is now showing a marked increase, the almost the highest slope on the entire graph. So the highest slopes on the graph are here just a few days before the eruption and here just a few days before the eruption. So what do you think is going to happen here? It is our guess that this will be up and slope off and boom, the next eruption. Worldwide volcano news update. Fernandina volcano on the Galapagos Island continues with multiple lava flow branches and many fear mongers wondering if it's going to kill all of the rare biodiversity in the Galapagos. But apparently they missed the memo. This volcano goes off all the time. And it is no different now, which is why the soil is so fertile and the biome there is what it is. Popo also puffing today. And here is that amazing shot of Villa Rica volcano in central Chile. Constant, vivid, steaming from the main vent and mid-mild Strombolian eruptions. Here you can see lenticular clouds illuminated by the Radiant Summit Lava Pond from Angarita Photography there. Beautiful shot. We also have Madapi today to 18,000 feet. Raventador to 15,000 feet. Sabancaya puffing and passing. Fuego to 17,000. Semeru in the picture to 15,000. Popo to 17. And what else do we have in here? Madapi to 18,000. And that is today's Worldwide Volcano News Update. Some gorgeous pictures. Space weather for March 5th. The sun has been quiet at solar max, completely dead for days. The latest HMI intensity showing some small sunspot pricks, but they are doing nothing like the pricks that they are. Not even a coronal hole to jiggle the solar indices. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is flat at KP2. Who knew? Now you do. The heaviest pair of black holes ever seen weigh 28 billion times more than the sun. Isn't math fun? And fairy tales are too. Like this fairy tale, ice-free summers in the Arctic possibly within the next decade, according to scientists. Now they were saying this two decades ago, and it never came true because the facts beat their fiction. Arctic sea ice ranks as the third highest in the last decade at the beginning of February and follows the normal growth of the 2010s. And not only that, fact check from Tony Heller, Arctic sea ice extent has been higher than it was 18 years ago every single day this year. How do you like them apples? But according to the fear mongers, we're going to be ice free in just a decade. 
San Diego man is the first in the U.S. to be charged with smuggling greenhouse gases. <laughs> we all are exhaling CO2 all day. Anyway, millions of research papers are at risk of disappearing from the internet, and for good reason. Many of them are shardicles. But an analysis of DOI suggests that digital preservation is not keeping up with burgeoning scholarly knowledge. The good news is the majority of papers are written by AI are completely fake. Now, a Texas-based company claims to have new evidence in the search for missing Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. And this may put a close once and for all to the conspiracy theory of the three orbs and the time warp. Or maybe not. <laughs> Flight MH370 was a Boeing 777 with 239 people aboard when it vanished shortly after takeoff from Kuala Lumpur on March 8th, 2014. And the mystery has only gotten more mysterious over the years. But according to some, there is new hope in the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines flight that vanished 10 years ago. The Texas-based company, Ocean Infinity, claims to have scientific evidence of the plane's final resting place at the bottom of the ocean and is proposing an all-new, no-fine, no-fee search. I'm very, very confident that the government of Malaysia and cabinet will approve such a proposal, according to Anthony Loke, Malaysian transport minister. So, the mystery deepens... Will they find the plane? Facebook, Instagram, and threads were all down today, and no one gave a single thing. You know about Borage? Well, you're going to know now. Borage officinalis, also known as starflower, is an annual herb in the flowering plant of the Boraginaceae, native to the Mediterranean, Although the plant contains small amounts of pyrrolzidine alkaloids, some parts are edible, and its seed oil is, well, you can use it as oil. And a lot of people put these flowers, these star flowers or the borage flowers, into ice cubes to make them look pretty. It's easy to grow, it self-seeds, and it is a wonderful chop and drop for your permaculture orchard. So consider some borage. For your future. Not only that, uh, it does have some traditional uses. Borage was cultivated for culinary and medicinal uses, although today commercial cultivation is mainly as an oil seed. Borage is used either as a fresh vegetable or a dried herb. As a fresh veg, borage with a cucumber-like taste is often used in salads or as a garnish, but there's like pricklies on the leaf, so you've got to get them young and fresh. The flower has a sweet honey-like taste and I eat them all summer because they're growing by self-seeding in all of our greenhouses as well as outside. You can use it to decorate desserts and cocktails and just get creative and grow some borage. In fact, it's fun because it's usually purple like this, but often you'll get a very rare pink bloom like this one and sometimes even pale white. So go get yourself some seeds and grow some borage. And have you seen gold? It hit another all-time high today, as well as Bitcoin. What is going on? I hope you all are capitalizing on the insanity. As the dollar is tanking, inflation increases. The world is moving into World War III. You need to hedge your bets and start, you know, preparing your coffers. Proper prior preparation prevents piss-poor performance. In the dystopian world, we are ever deepening into and that's a boom to knowledge please share this video as we are shadow band we need your help to grow become a patreon support the work we do and watch all of our podcasts in one place commercial free be safe we love you and we'll see you all at the san luis valley seed exchange march 30th and 31st in moffitt colorado mm -hmm.